Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim, the truck's Daisy, and we're hauling paws. Today we're working on air conditioning and I have to replace a thing called a thermal expansion valve. Some people call it a TXV, some people call it an H valve. All three ways are acceptable in the mechanical world, but if you're looking for the part, then you're going to want to call it a thermal expansion valve. You'll find it a little bit easier. Uh, this is a 2017 Super Duty. This particular part fits a whole bunch of different Fords. And the process is real similar when you're doing the repair. I'll put the part number thingy up over here. Now, the thermal expansion valve, there's a couple of different ways that, um, that it fails. Uh, one is it's stuck open, and then the other one is it's stuck closed. The symptoms are much different between those two failure modes. When, they, when it sticks open, which is the most common way that they fail, the air conditioning will sometimes just be weak. It just won't work as good. Inside this device, it's a little aluminum block. Let's see, I'll pull it out so you can see it. It's an aluminum block and it's got a couple of holes where the high pressure and low pressure is and it's got an, a variable orifice that it opens and closes. And that makes the pressure differential so that the liquid Freon, now I'm calling it Freon because that's just a, a trade name, but it's 134A, but the liquid refrigerant then vaporizes in that pressure differential. When you have a little hole to go through, you've got liquid high pressure on one side, it comes out the other side and it evaporates really fast. So when it, stick, when it sticks open, the hole is really big. So the, there's no orifice for it to make a whole lot of pressure differentials. So it takes longer for it to evaporate and it doesn't quite work as good. That's the most common failure. Sometimes you won't have any AC while it's idling, but when you're driving down the highway, then you'll start getting AC out of the vents. You'll feel the cold coming, but the, uh, but the thermal ex expansion valve is stuck completely open. So at low speed, it doesn't really have enough time or enough pressure differential for it to do what it's supposed to do. Another uh, symptom there will be when it's at idle, your compressor will run nonstop. Everything will look like it's it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty much the way that it's supposed to be happening. You're just not getting any cold out of it. Now, if you had a gauge set, then you'd be able to see that because your high side and your low side wouldn't be very different. That's what usually happens when the thermal expansion valve goes bad and uh, sticks open. When it's got a giant hole in it, then the pressure differential won't be that much, and you'll see, you'll see that on your gauges. Now, to work on this, the AC stuff, you need a couple of special tools. I'm gonna leave links to all these things down in the uh, in the description, and what I'm gonna leave are affordable options for these tools. Now, you can buy some really expensive gauges and the pump. Uh, or you can buy the economy versions of it. And if you're only going to be using them, you know, once in a while, then you don't necessarily need to get the most expensive gauges or the most exp expensive vacuum pump. So I'm going to leave affordable options down in the, in the links. Uh, I'll also leave a link to this uh, expansion valve down in the, um, in the description. Just in case you uh, you need to get one, you can click on that one and you can check it. It fits a lot of different years. When you look up the part number, you'll know. <clears throat> so when it sticks closed, you have the opposite thing happening. You have a very small orifice or it's completely closed. And what you'll see is the high side will be way high and the low side will be almost sucking vacuum. It'll be almost nothing. And then when you shut the truck off, the two pressures, since the system is all connected, should equalize. They should both go to the same pressure, especially after it sits overnight. And that wasn't happening on this truck. What was happening on this truck is it was staying really high on the high side, the low side was really low, and it stayed that way overnight. That's a restriction in the system somewhere. 
the most common place for that restriction is going to be in the thermal expansion valve. You could have some other problems with like the condenser and things like that, but the most common place that you're going to have the, uh, the restriction is in this thermal expansion valve. A little tricky to get to this thing, so I'm going to do this video to show you how to get into that. So you're going to need a, a, a gauge set like this. You're also going to need a vacuum pump to suck a vacuum onto the system after you do all this work. You can't leave air in the system, so it's going to, you're going to suck all the air out of it and create a vacuum like outer space inside all those tubes. And it'll also help you when you go to put the 134A uh, refrigerant back into it, it'll help suck it in when it first when you're first starting to charge. You're gonna need a couple of cans of the 134A. Make sure you look on the sticker that's right here, and it tells you that this one needs 27 ounces. This can is 20 ounces. I've got two of them, so I've got plenty of that. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to discharge the system. This, this system was fully charged, but there was no AC. It just wouldn't work. So you have to discharge the system. So there's a couple ways. Well, there's only one way really to do that. You have to find a buddy, if you don't have it, that has a reclamation uh, station to suck all the Freon or the 134A out of your system. So take it to your buddy, have them hook up the gauges and suck all the stuff out of it. Once it's all sucked out, now you can do whatever you want and you won't need a shop after that. So, you know, if you have to go to a shop and pay to have them discharge it, then that's the only time that you'll need them. You won't need to go back to the shop to have them charge it because you can do it when you have these tools available to you. Now you can rent one of these vacuum pumps, but it's act they're actually really affordable. I think I got this one for, gosh, I want to say about 60 bucks. It wasn't it really wasn't that bad. Um, you don't use it very often, so you just do your thing, then put it up on the shelf, and I mean, and it'll last for a long time. So get yourself one of these pumps for pretty cheap and get yourself a gauge set and you'll be all set to go. So after we replace the part, then we're gonna suck all the air out of it, recharge it, and then hopefully it'll work the way that it's supposed to work. Um, I'm also gonna leave a link to, <clears throat> My killer underhood light, you can see that thing works great and it stretches across the hood so that it holds the light up there for you so you don't have to go get your sun to hold your flashlight and it works really good. So I'll leave a link to that up there too. I think I got a video on that thing too, but you got to go dig back through a whole bunch of videos to find it. So I'll put a link to that in there too. So I'm going to get to pulling this thing apart. Uh, it's... I mean, it's not a terrible job. It's a little tight down there where it's at. I gotta get this uh, air intake tube off and get the uh, air filter out. If you've got a newer one of these Super Duties, then the battery's back there. Uh, you have to pull the battery out. You don't have to pull your air filter out. You just have to pull the battery out of the way, but I've gotta get this tube out and get my air filter box out. So I'm gonna fire up the heater and uh, get at it. It's a little bit cold out here. Okay, so the thermal expansion valve is on the passenger side, and it's right there. I have to take off that connector, or that, where those two lines go in. There's a bolt right in the middle that you have to take out. And then there's also a bolt right there that you have to take out so you can actually move these lines once you get that undone back there. Shit thanks my turbo sexy it really turns her on. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is really hard to video this thing.
13 millimeter nut. And we should be able to pop these lines free. held in by two Allen bolts. So I'm gonna get those out and get that thing out of there. So getting that sucker back in there was a lot harder than getting it out. You can see there's a rubber seal that goes all the way around it. And it's just a, a pain that's in there so tight, you gotta wiggle that seal around and get it squished in there. Once you get it squished in there, then you just put the two Allen bolts back on. I've got the the uh, aluminum lines pushed back up there with new gaskets and now I just got to get it tightened down. So now I've got all the lines and stuff all put back together so now we have to start pulling a vacuum on this system and I'm going to do it uh, before I start putting all this other stuff together because it just shortens the time. So you have to take off the cap for the low side and you take off the cap for the high side. And then you get your blue hose. Get it clipped on there. And then tighten this down. Make sure this is tight. And you get your red hose and you put it on here. Make sure this is tight. Close this or open it. Then you get your yellow hose and you screw it onto your vacuum pump. Ooh, ooh. Then you turn your vacuum pump on. Then on your gauges, I'll bring it down here so you can see it. Then you're going to open the high side, open the low side. you're gonna see it start drawing a vacuum and you want to get it down there as close to 30 as you can get and just let it keep sucking what it'll do is it will also boil out any water that's in or moisture that's in the system so you just let that run for a little bit so we'll check in a little while later a few moments later so this has been sucking for about maybe 25 minutes. Uh, I took a little break after I put the tube back in and the air cleaner. Now if your system had a leak or it was open to the atmosphere for an extended period of time, then you're gonna wanna let this do its thing, I mean even overnight, to really suck all the moisture out. You really don't want moisture in there. It'll really affect your uh, uh, performance of your AC. But since mine was fully charged a few days ago before I had it discharged, um, I, I, I just sucked it down for about 25 minutes and it should be okay. So what you do now is you close both of these. Close them up good. And you shut off your vacuum pump and now you watch 
this needle and you let that sit for about you know 5 10 15 minutes and it should stay there if it starts coming up do another evacuation suck it some more and then and then check it again if it keeps coming up that means that you got a leak in the system but if it stays right there then if it stays in a vacuum here then uh, then you, you're good you don't have a leak but it so it should stay right where it's at so we'll check back in about 10 minutes and see if it moved so this has been sitting for about 15 minutes and it hasn't moved so that tells me that I don't have any leaks now let me explain how these gauges work this hose the high side is connected to this gauge all the time the blue hose is connected to the low side gauge all the time when you open these valves what it does is it connects whichever one you're turning so if you turn this one you're connecting the high side to the yellow hose to the center that's going to become important when you start charging this thing. So you connect that yellow hose and it will draw a vacuum on both sides at the same time. So let's get set up to charge this thing. Now these cans come with this nifty putter in her. It's got the low side fitting and it's got a low side gauge. And that's fine if you're just adding a little bit um, or uh, you know just kind of topping it off or whatever. But I'm going to be charging through the manifold gauge set and I'll show you how we're going to do that. The manifold gauge set comes with this nifty adapter and what it does is it screws onto the top of the can and then allows you to co connect your yellow line straight to this can and then you can put in on the high side and the low side at the same time. Never charge on the high side when the engine is running listen to me you don't charge on the high side when it's running when you're putting your initial charge in the cars or the truck or the vehicle is going to be off and you can charge on both sides just to get the initial charge in when you actually start the vehicle you are not going to be charging on the high side if you charge on the high side this can is going to explode. Okay, so I've got my can hooked up to the yellow line. Everything's connected here. You're going to come over here to your high side, and you're going to close this valve. And then you're going to go to your low side and do the same thing. It'll make more sense in just a second thing is you do not want any air in this system at all so we've got vacuum on the blue line all the way up to here and we've got vacuum on the red line all the way up to here but we've got air right now inside the yellow line so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the can on and then you're gonna take this right here and crack it loose until you hear a hiss and then close it back up and that will purge the air out of this line you have to turn this to engage the can, crack this line, get the air out of it, and then what I do is I turn this can upside down, and then you open both of these valves, and it's going to start charging on the high side and the low side at the same time, but before you do that, you got to reopen these valves so that it will go in. Double check we got full vacuum. We got good vacuum there. Now I'm going to open both of these things. And I'm just going to let the pressure from this can go into there. And then you can look through the sight glass and you can see the liquid going in. You don't want to run it on liquid there's also a little thing in there that's got it says wet dry and caution you want to make sure your ring in there is the right color wet's yellow caution is kind of a light green and then dry is dark green and mine's dark green so we're good to go and you see the pressures are coming up on the gauge and you want to just let it keep going 
until you stop seeing it in your sight glass. Now once you've got it not moving anymore, then you shut off both of these, turn your cam back right side up, and now you're gonna give it about five minutes to kind of equalize, and then we're gonna start the vehicle and finish the charging process. When we start charging, we're going to put the air conditioning in max AC, recirculate the whole nine yards, and have the windows open, and then, and with the fan blowing at max, and then we'll start charging on the low side. Okay, so I got the truck going now, and you can see that the low side is really low and the high side is not right. So now we've got to get the rest of the charge in here. So we start cracking the low side, bringing the pressure up. You don't want to just wide open throttle. You want to keep it around 10 PSI, if you can. And you're just going to keep going until this can gets empty. So when the compressor starts cycling, that's a good thing, but it's going to take a little longer to empty your can because it will only be drawing in at its maximum rate when the compressor's on. And you can see it here cycling back and forth on the low side. Well, you'll see it on the high side too, but the low side will draw down and that's when it will be drawn out of your can and then the, the low side will go back up when the compressor shuts off. And you can see it cycling back and forth, and that makes me happy. The cooling fan also turned on, so that makes me happy also, because that tells me everything's working the way it's supposed to be working. And I tell you what, this is gonna make me a whole bunch of happy. You might not know, well, since you're at this video, you might actually know. But driving across country in the hot weather with no AC sucks. Driving through Florida or Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Southern California with no air conditioning is really bad. I had to drive all the way back from uh, California to Michigan with no air conditioning, Southern California, and that was a miserable trip. And your cooled seats don't help you if your AC is not working. All it does is take warm, moist, humid air and blow it on your butt. So that's no good. This makes me happy. So this can is just about empty and I'm going to switch it out to the other can. So the way you do that is you shut off your blue and then you shut this off. Then you unscrew this. Now, don't freak out, you might have a little bit of the, the 134 come out of the tube and now you throw this away and go get your other can now you do your second can the same way you did your first can hook it all up purge the valve and then open up the blue side and let it start drawing out now i only need about seven ounces out of this can so however you figure that out is up to you it's a 20 ounce can. I need about a third of the can. So you weigh the can. What I did is I weighed the can and then I'll use up some of it, re-weigh the can and make sure I get about a third. <coughs> you can also go by the pressures on the gauges. Another thing that you can do while this is going on. is you can use the adapter that comes with the can for your second can and then you charge it until it gets into the green on that gauge see it see it green so then you charge it into that but if you know what your pressures are supposed to be then you can just go based off your pressures and the weight of your can i decided to go ahead and hook up the gauge that comes with the can so you can see what it looks like when it's doing what it's supposed to do. You can see how it's cycling back and forth in the green. You want your pressure somewhere around 30 when it's running. That's the way it's supposed to act. Oh yeah, 
that's some cold AC there. Oh boy. I'm happy. So there you have it. Replacing your thermal expansion valve on a 2017, 2018, 2019, a whole bunch of them. Uh, Super Duties, this one's got the 6.7 uh, diesel, but they're all the same. The process is all the same. Uh, hope you got something good out of this video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. I'm going to put my tools away and get myself ready to go back on the road. So, that's all for this one. Have safe travels, and I hope to see you on the road.